Welcome everyone to part 2 of Dynasty Warriors 4 Extreme Legends. And in this episode, we are going to continue on through the Yellow Turban Rebellion by going through the Yellow Turban Fortress. First, Sunjiot's army defeats Zhang Liang, thereby driving back the Yellow Turban forces. Thanks to this victory, word of the heroic Sunjiot of Jiangdong spread throughout the camp. In response, the Yellow Turban forces take up a defensive position within Zhang Bao's fortress in hopes of, repel of repelling any further attacks by the Imperial Army. Meanwhile, the leader of the Yellow Turban Zhang Jiao continues to gather his forces for the final battle. And folks, in order for the final battle with the Yellow Turbans to be a lot easier, you might want to take this place on. Again, I stressed in part one that you could just simply go to the Yellow Turban Rebellion and just be done with it. And by the way, this is the first three acts are good places to grind for not just experience points on not only your officers, but your weapons, but also a great place to pick up uh, defense and attack because again this is the last game where you have that sort of thing <clears throat> so on that note I am going to uh, actually change up my bodyguards or well, not change up my bodyguard class but change up the weapons they have well that is changing up the class so I'm gonna go on ahead and give a pipe because it'll be a lot faster and they'll have more range. And I do believe, depending on the pike, they'll actually shoot out elemental attacks. So that's a good thing too. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, let's begin the Yellow Turban Fortress. This one's a rather infamous one for me. The Yellow Turban Fortress is split into two paths, the right and the left. Cow it doesn't matter which east, path you go, because you're going to end up taking them the both down. May move but as I might. suggest you go to the right. And that is the one that's going to have the Phantom Troops. Oh yeah, the Phantom Troops are very infamous. They are like a thing in almost every Dynasty Warriors game. Well, almost. Nine doesn't have them. That's the thing. They have something a little bit different than that. But whatever the case, folks. We are going to be happy to take... Oh, I, I just pushed the demon from this. I'm sorry. We're going to have to take down one of these forts or the other. I would prefer to go to the right because the left is an uphill battle. And it is a real uphill battle because you're trying to get to the yellow turbines, but you're being stopped by a gust of wind. So what we're going to do is beat up uh, Zhang Bao, and you can tell I'm rather rusty because I've been used to playing Dynasty Warriors 9. And folks, if I do suck, it's because of the fact that I'm transitioning from a uh, later version game to an earlier version game. And no matter how much I practice, it ki I kind of get confused with the, on the controls. So that will explain that I'm not playing my, my normal style. Let me just get my horse and ride through. And sorry about that uh, frame rate drop, folks. I know I keep apologizing for this, but it's not my computer's fault. I swear to God. It is one, either the AV cable or the game itself. And the game itself do have a lot of slowdown. So that is a thing. All right. Now that we're here in this fort, I do believe this is the part where the Phantom Soldiers appear. And Zhou Kang, of all people, is actually the one that is control of the Phantom Soldiers. In case you're wondering, he ends up becoming Guan Yu's henchman. Too bad for the fact that even though his, he, his establishing role is like pulling Guan Yu's weapon and taking care of red hair, he practically gets aced. Oh, excuse me. What's going 
going on? What? Get away from me! Well, here comes the Phantom Soldiers, folks. Behind every and spell. unlike oh, Dynasty oh. Warriors for Focus Empire, so all you have to do source. is just kill Zhang Bao or take a uh, base that happens to be responsible for creating the Phantom Soldiers. The only way to get rid of the Phantom Soldiers in this game is to break that base. Again, I'm not too keen on where all of the angel uh, wine and dim sum is, but I do believe, I do remember there was one in this stage, and I think the angel wine was, I just passed it up probably, I more than likely did. So again, I'll have the locations of the angel wine and dim sum in the uh, area. And this is another uh, elemental hazard that Taking out the officer is not going to stop. You're going to have to manually deal with this. It's better to deal with the Phantom Soldiers than trying to fight an uphill battle against the Windstorm. And you're about to see why in just a few moments once we get through. Oh yeah, and by the way, if you do manage to get through the Windstorm, you end up coming here and all you have to do is beat the Guard Captain just to open the gate. And from there... You could just, uh, take out Zhou Kang, the, no, Zhou Sang and the Yellow Turbans. I missed the last name, my bad. You could take out Zhou Sang, the Yellow Turbans, and, oh, the Yellow Turbans altars, which I just destroyed, and also keep them from trying to go to the main camp, because the Phantom Soldiers actually could do a number on your officers. Bear in mind this. Due to the fact that they can't be hit, the Phantom Soldiers do Impressive. Uh, deal twice the damage that a normal soldier does. And plus, they can block your combos. Well, not block your combos, interrupt them, that's what I meant to say. So even if you are trying to take out, like, one of the altars, both of the altars, or just destroying Jokei, saying I... I can't believe I can say that. Apologies. So saying there. That's the end of it. Um, even if you do try to take out all the officers that happen to be in the vicinity, you've got to realize that the Phantom Soldier tend to um, interrupt you, and they can also clash with you. That's the thing. I forgot to mention in Dynasty Warriors 4 Empire. The Phantom Soldiers can actually clash with you and take away your Musao. That has happened to me about maybe once or twice. But I managed to destroy the altars before they managed to do that. So, we're heading over to our uh, allies who happen to be trapped on the other side. And if you went to the other side, there would be a cutscene where Pei Yuan Shao would be summoning the windstorm that keeps the enemy office or oh, keeps the allies from coming any further. And by the way, I just went through the back way because, again, archers. Archers are assholes in this game. I mean, I can't keep repeating the same line over and over again, but I'm just beating the dead horse. Because these guys will shoot at you while you're trying to struggle to get past these things. The windmill. You're going to have to destroy these windmills in order for the allies to get through. This is what's causing the windstorm. So just getting up there is not going to be enough. Beating the windstorm means beating these windmills. I mean, that's all there is to it. And now that we got through to the windstorm, I think Pei Yuan Shao's around here somewhere. I'm pretty sure I just passed him up. In fact, he should be behind. Oh wait, I just I just saw him. I thought I just saw him. No way, actually I did pass him up. He's right here. Oh, and I could just simply go straight up north and 
save uh, South South from enemy officer the enemy officer hit. that he's fighting. And pay you on Chow, no matter how much combos you do, will end up you giving you a defense too behind. because you broke through the uh, windmills. And Joe Sang will give you an attack plus two Impressive. for breaking through the factor. So, or at least defeating him. That's what it is. And God forbid, I forgot to mention. Oh, actually, no, I didn't mention the controls because, again, this is based off of Dynasty Warriors 4 Empires, which has the same type of controls. The charge attack in midair is absolutely fantastic. Causing shockwaves actually helps. Alright, all that's left now is to take down, uh... Take down a uh, Jang Bao, I do believe. Uh, if by any chance you actually seal all the strongholds in Yellow Turban Fortress, Jang Bao will show up in Yellow Turban Rebellion. So we're gonna have to defeat him in order to keep him from showing up. Oh, by the way. That box is where you get the hex marks harness. Impressive. Yeah, I forgot to mention that certain saddles will show up in the game. And I will actually mark those as well if I haven't already done so in part one. But unlike Zhang Liang, which had geysers, Zhang Bao is just a straight up fight. I mean, you can hold off all of the enemies and take care of all the grunts that comes after you. Oh, and by the way, your uh, weapon combos past 5 or 10 will garner you some experience as well. So bear that in mind. It wasn't meant to be. I was also about to say, counters gives you experience points as well. But there was one thing I did not mention, which will actually come up later on in the game, and that's duels. I'll talk about those when they show up. But they are in this game. Obviously, this is the game that started the duels. But, with that said, uh, Zhang Bao has been defeated. He's actually the easier of the three brothers. And more importantly, this place, as well as the rest of the Yellow Turban Rebellion, is actually pretty easy. And I even maxed out my bodyguards! So yeah, they're at the best shape they could be. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be actually easier to deal with Yellow Turban Rebellion because of the fact that we took out both Menace and also Fortress. And actually defeated the two enemies that are there. So I'll see you guys in part three. This is RVMan985. Peace out.